Hi, this is Pumpkin Creek Primitives. I'm Bobby. It's November 14th, 2021. This is Floss Tube number 64. This is a channel about cross stitch, my website slash Etsy shop, and always a fur baby or two. Hope you guys enjoy. <laughs> Hello, hello, hello. I wish I could insert a outtake of the moment after I finish my little intro and when I start filming this. It's literally like <sighs> sigh of relief because I try to sound so, um, I don't know, like I got my shit together when I'm trying to do the intro. And then when I start filming this, I just feel comfortable and I know I'm just talking and I have cat ears. <laughs> Mr. Skis. Right. Oh, yes. Okay. So he's right here. I just feel, I don't know. I feel more comfortable with the chit chat and I feel like my hair is like, it's fine. Um, I feel like I'm trying to be all prim and proper, you know, trying to do my intro to where it sounds like I halfway know what I'm doing. Um, but you know, um, some of you possibly saw on Instagram where I posted about the, um, Jane Doe, the Murray County Jane Doe that I talked about last week. Um, they actually, the DNA, project actually has a campaign going for her uh raising funds so that they can uh i guess get her full sequencing dna so they can start working on genealogy and seeing if they can uh find out who she is that way um which i donated because you know and i think what i'm gonna do i think i'm gonna donate every month um i donated a hundred dollars now Really? Really? This is serious business. We don't need booty boos in the... Thank you. Um, I, and I'm only saying that because um, I am doing it through my business because it is, it is a tax write-off, but it is a very good charity that I want to donate to. So through my business, I can maybe donate a little more and a little often than probably I could personally. Um, not that it's not a write-off on your personal tax returns, but you know. So I think I'm going to just be like, I'll try to do like $100 a month. I put it in the, in my budget for my business until she's about halfway to her goal. It's $4,000. Um, so, um, yeah, it'll get there eventually. So, um, what I wanted to extend to you guys, um, is if you see the Instagram post or the, it's also on my Facebook page for my uh, business, if you could share the post, like it, comment, same thing with Instagram. I know I had a lot of likes on Instagram. Um, go visit the project. You don't have to donate to her. They also have a general fund you can donate to if you want to donate. Um, I always hate sounding like I'm asking for money, but y'all, she just weighed heavy on my heart. I don't know. I can't, I can't explain it. I think because she's just so, was found so close and things just seem so odd and then when i was looking through the charlie project which is missing people um there's a 
young woman that went missing in 1974, but they say it wasn't until December. And I meant to look up what the temperature was that year because Murray County J. Doe was found in um, on February 14th, 1975. I think she went missing in 74, maybe autumn, and I'm assuming because she was skeletal. So um, this person on the Charlie Project out of, I, think, I believe it was North Carolina, she was 17. I mean, they have pictures of her where we just have renderings of Murray County. So age and stuff fit, um, race fits. The, depending on how accurate the, the picture, um, of the rendering is, I, the nose aperture, I think is what it's called, maybe didn't seem quite the same. Um, the only reason why she caught my attention is because she fit, she fit the time roughly, the age roughly, and when she went missing, she had on platforms, which depending on who you're talking about, some people may think wedges are platforms. And she had on blue pants. In Murray County, she had on blue floral pants. So, I don't know. I was just looking at her. And I, you know, Googled and tried to see if anybody else had tried to see if they fit. But, I don't know. Just <laughs> something I do randomly at work sometimes to take a break. <laughs> but... All right, so yeah, I just wanted to say that on, I'll put a link, um, let me write that note, put link, put a link in the show notes just in case, I mean, even if you just want to look and see if she, you know her, <laughs> um, obviously, but they're, they're, the link below will be also if you want to donate. Okay, now that all my politicking is aside, um, let's get to haul. All right, so I don't have like a ton of haul. It just is, it's two unboxings. <laughs> so, um, the first I got was my um, Forbidden Fiber Co. Fabric of the Month. And this is 14 Count Ada. And it's called Cranberry Crush. Look at how beautiful. I love it. Love it. I may change this. Leanne, if you're watching and I forget to email you, <laughs> I may change this. If Are you doing 18 count at all? I don't know if maybe you were only doing 14 ADA. And that was the only ADA. And that's why I got 14. If that's, ouch. If that's the case, obviously I'll just keep 14 count. I can't remember. Because normally I don't pick 14 count, but I know I wanted Ada. But, uh, yeah, I'm loving the fabric. Of course, I love her floss. I'm super bummed I didn't get the floss she did for that um, uh, Sleepy Hollow box. Oh, so gorgeous. So gorgeous. All right. Um, I also want to give um, a little, another little plug for Leanne. Um she, they're doing a Valentine's Day box. So at Downton Abbey Valentine's Day box. So you should totally go to her website and um, see if they have more boxes. Um, I'm so excited. So excited for this box. Of course, I got it like immediately. I ordered it. Um, okay. I did not make necessary arrangements to place things. <laughs> so then it goes on the floor. All right, Punch Needle, Primitive Stitcher Magazine. You guys, I'm not going to do a full flip through because other people do it. Um, there's a cute, always, Teresa Kogut pattern in here. Um, but the main one, there's a lot of, um, there's a good Housewives one in here. Um there's some really cute ones, but I do it every time. Although this one's really cute. Miss Millie Snow. Look how cute that one is. <laughs> and she's so cute. Um, and that one's by um, Teresa's Primitive Treasures, which I'm not really familiar with a lot of her stuff. But okay, it's this one. It's Barbara Anna and it's called Dancer. 
I love it. I love, first of all, that he, well, okay, it depends because obviously this is the reindeer and reindeers in the wintertime, the females have the, have the uh, horns. We went through this whole discussion before, I believe. So I love that she is <laughs> wearing a turtleneck. <laughs> so I'm really excited for that one. And of course, Lindy Stitchy's got a great one in here. Of course, it's got a Kit Kat on it. And then it was some really cute one by um, Janine McGowan, the blue flower. And it's got a fox and a pheasant, maybe? So cute. So, and it fits with the heart little series that she did. But yeah, I, I just got some good ones this time. And if y'all do not subscribe, you really should. Like, this is... Um, <sighs> Twin Peak Primitives. They always have amazing charts. She does, she does houses amazing. I love it. Yeah, it's just a really, really, really good subscription. I can't say more. And y'all see me go through my other ones and I'm like, I don't ever get sad faced over this. I love it. It's worth it as I throw it on the floor, but I do mean it. It's worth it. <laughs> okay. So remember how a black cat box was supposed to be my last box. So I got sent that they were sending me, like I got the shipping notification. I didn't even, y'all, pardon my reach. I get scissors. Um, I got a notification. I was getting one shipped and I responded back and was like, um, I canceled this. And she was like, yeah, you canceled it three days after the payment went through for this one. And I was like, oh, I thought I was paying for the black cat one. She was like, no, that was paid in September. And I was like, ew. I don't know. So, yeah. So, last cat lady. Oh, and I'm wearing my cat lady sweatshirt from the black cat box. All right. So, always the best thing about these is the art. That's sad to say. I don't want to say, I mean, the cats just don't give a shit about the toys. And I like the t-shirt. And that's about it. Like, I, I just need to go buy t-shirts. Like, the cat toys this time. Oh, it's a candle. I was like, is this a, supposed to be a cigarette? <laughs> I'm just saying, it's a candle. And then a pea. A green bean. My cats don't care. Um, and then of course, cats are greater than people. <laughs> so like, I love the shirts. The shirts are great. Um, they're good quality. I really love the shirts. But I can't keep getting this box when I'm only loving the shirts. So I got a cat soap dispenser that I have nowhere to put. I can use this. It's a pot holder. Everybody can use a pot holder. Oh, and then it's letting me know that the next box is my Meow Holidays box. Well, too bad because I already canceled. Don't try to suck me in, folks. I'm shutting the box down. Don't suck me in. Okay, why won't it shut? It's also because, like, i am got uh, 42 things balanced over here. And I'm sucking at it right now. Okay. Okay, so I think my next part of my personal haul is this, but I'm going to show it at the end in case you guys have already seen it and you don't care. Although I will warn you, this will be at the end and then after this will be, I got a video of Skeeter and Arlo and then I got a video of the boys in our bark box. So if you, you can skip through this, but if you just stop the video when I go into this, you're going to going to miss my babies. I mean, they're the stars anyways, right? Okay. So let me set that aside. And so the next thing I want to show real quick before I have to rearrange everything before I get into plans and stitching and stuff is so Sam, um, from Sammy Liz, sorry, y'all, my little wispies are driving me bananas. Um, 
she started using comic book boards and sleeves for her fabric. And so I was like, let me try that out a little bit. Cause I have all those pouches. I just don't have enough pouches for all the fabric that I have. It's so sad. Um, so I've used up most of those, but I think I'm going to use the pouches, um, for linens and my Lugana and even weave stuff. I don't use that often, um, because the storage is, I don't have to get into, but yeah, it looks nice on my Ikea cart. And for Ada's that I'm into all the time, I'm going to do the comic book thing. And I bought the comic book box thing. It Velcro shut. It holds this many fabrics. And you can even see, I don't you can't really see from there, but you can see my writing across the top. So... There's my fabric. And so it's really easy. I got two of these boxes. I need about three more. Um, yeah. So like, we stitch me. I've got everything written across the top. So they just, and it's in the um, friction pin. So I just erase them. And most likely for most of these, like be stitch me and stuff. It's the same. I'm getting normally the same count. Ada all the time. And I'll just, um, scratch out the, not scratch out, but erase the name and add the new name. So yeah, so I wanted to show y'all that and I got it all on Amazon, um, all the pieces. And it's not like the cheapest solution, but it's not an expensive solution. Um, so yeah, but I'm loving this, except for this picked up every piece of lint, but I am loving the box. And of course it keeps them all protected from the sunlight which is the whole reason I went with the bags in the first place because I don't have any like drawer storage or anything in my area yet I will once we if we ever build out the shop craft room which I don't see it ever happening anytime soon let's be honest <laughs> you know <laughs> all right let's get into whips because I finished my haul. Okay. Breathe. I don't know why I'm out of breath. Oh, I know why. Because I have, well, I mean, I have anxiety. I feel like I have anxiety and I didn't know why, but I just remembered why when I see one of my whips. Okay. So, first whip has been in my plans for weeks and weeks and weeks and I keep not doing it. <laughs> and it's Country Cottage Needlework Silent Night. And I'm doing this for my mother for her Christmas gift. So I had to get started, right? So, I mean, I had done a little bit, but I got cranking on it a little bit. Um, this morning I worked on it. So this is where I'm at. So I feel like this is a church and this is a steeple, but we can't see all the people. Um, <coughs> But it's coming along. I think it looks great. I'm loving the way this white lightning. I mean, I hate white stitches. Okay, so the cross and the snowflakes are in blanc. But this is in white lightning. And so it's got silver. So you can see those two rows right there. Like a silvery and these over here silvery. And some silvery right there. So I like that variegation. That's happening. And I forgot how easy these are to stitch <laughs> and how fast they go um i apparently just been stitching some really difficult stuff <laughs> and i forgot um how easy it is to stitch um <laughs> i don't know what i've been doing lately i mean i just sat down and started stitching away and i was like oh this is like so going so fast i mean I felt like I got a good chunk done. I was just doing it this morning as long as, and I was doing other things, other stitching too. So, okay. So that, hopefully I'll have that done in a couple weeks. Do we believe me? <laughs> so, all right. So next is cryptids. So I have to show you the new release because we had the jackalope last time and 
So we have a new release, which I didn't get started on it, but it's okay. He's the Yeti. He's the Yeti. So cute. So cute. And I do love how everybody draws the Yeti like the abominable, whatever. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Is it abominable snowman? That's a hard word. I mean, we know words are hard for me anyways. Um, because really, I think in history, Yetis are actually like red. <laughs> There's some, a lot of reports. But I noticed everybody's doing Yetis as like the abominable snowman, which is white. Anywho, maybe I'm wrong on that, but I kind of feel like the Yeti legend. Of course, now I'm going to Google. <laughs> Because what else do you do when you're in the middle of filming and you should be talking about other shit? I mean, yeah, okay. So it wants to give me um, Yeti coolers. I mean, come on. <sighs> so yeah, a lot of it shows it as white, but I'm telling you. I don't recall so much for the what? Oh, somebody find some DNA. But yeah, a lot of them show him as white, but I actually think I don't know, there's some that show him with a little bit of red. Not like brown. But anyway, okay, it's neither here nor there. Put down the phone, Bobby, it's fine. Anyway. <laughs> I worked on, I did not work on anything during lunch. I failed again this week. I don't know what my problem is. Work is super stressful. We're one person down um, in my department. Um, my construction accountant. I still have not found a replacement. So I am one person down. And it is stressful. And so I think when I'm at lunch, like I don't, it's, it, I, I'm so stressed at work that stitching doesn't even calm me. I need to just shove food in my mouth, which means Weight Watchers has gone to the wayside. I, I'll start back in the beginning of the year. I just am so stressed right now and I'm a stress eater. Um, so it's just, I have to unplug and I watch Netflix and that's all I can do. It's all I can manage. All right, let me get this blanket out. So here we are. So I have a little bit, I have most of the jackalope in, um, I probably have, you know, I'm missing probably 50 stitches, give or take, I would say. I've got his antlers to put in. Um, so yeah, I have his antlers to put in. I got the yellow and the corners to put in. And then there's like a flower thing here. And then I got his eyes. So yeah, and then I got two, two stitches over here I got to do, which I just, I don't even know if I'll do them. They're just random one stitch of black. So, and then I did that. And then I did this. So, yeah. And then you see how he's like shrugging up on one side? <laughs> Cause he's one side too big. That's okay. He's kind of like, mm hmm. <laughs> you just see a frog like, mm -hmm. So, that's fine. I can live with it. I am fine, fine, fine. Because from far away, y'all wouldn't even notice. If you did, don't tell me. <laughs> Lie to me. Lie to me. Um, but yeah, I'm loving this um, stitch. I mean, I absolutely am loving it. It's the witchy stitcher, baby. I mean, I work on it. Quite a bit. So, but as you can see, I worked on it. I didn't work on it. Um, I worked on it yesterday, but didn't work on it at all. The whole week, I didn't work on anything. It is what it is. All right, so also yesterday, here's what I have anxiety about. I mean, not really. This baby. All right, guys. So here's what I did. I had all of your comments. And I will say hands down, 
rip it out one. And most people were, but mainly it went at one because I hadn't done so much. And everybody said by the look on my face. All right, so I rewatched. <laughs> Let me explain. The look on my face was not about the colors. The look on my face was about effing it up. Okay. Um, because I get mad at myself. If I had converted the colors to start with, obviously I wouldn't care, right? But when you make a mistake, like I just, it just makes me so mad because I'm like, I swear I can't do anything right. This is how it makes me feel. I can't count right. Can't, you know. And so I think I am really hard on myself. And like I said, I'm at, under stress at work. So like, it's even worse. Like I'm even more mean to myself, I guess. So here's what I did. And I set, told some people in the comments because I thought I, even if I were going to start over, I was already like, I'm not ripping that out. I'm going to flip up, you know, turn the fabric, start at the bottom and um, started over the right way. So I stitched it. I didn't like it. So I was like, all right, I need some blind testing. So I folded it up. My husband has never seen this pattern. He's not watched my floss tube, which hurts my feelings a little bit, but not really because I talk smack about him. So it's fine. Um, I mean, it's nothing I wouldn't say to his face. So it doesn't matter. Um, but he's never seen the pattern. He has no idea what the overall, and I told him, I said, it's just a repeating border. So what you see is going to repeat around the whole border. He's like, I understand what a border is. I'm like, okay. So I showed him the two side by side, what I did. And I said, which do you like better? He picked my first one. He fixed, he picked the incorrect one. And I'll be honest, when I look at them side by side, I really like my incorrect one the best. So sorry to disappoint. <laughs> I mean, I know y'all aren't disappointed. It's my piece. And I know y'all are like, do what you want to do. Um, I just think everybody perceived, and I mean, I did too, for the most part, I thought, perceived me being upset because I didn't like the way it looked. It wasn't. I was upset because I messed up. So in doing this, I like the original, and I'll show you both of them side by side. And a lot of it could just be the fabric that I did it on. Um, so I'm going to do it with the conversion. <laughs> so here we go. I really, seriously, prefer this one. Um, I think what I don't care for on this is I feel like that black looks really stark next to the orange. And I think the two oranges together, I like them split up like over here. It breaks it up a little bit. So <coughs> thank everybody for their opinion, but this will be what I'm going with. Um, That's so weird because those are holes, but the way it looked on here, it looks like I've got messy stitches, but they're the holes <laughs> where there's no stitches. Um, but yeah, so I'm going with this route, um, which is fine because it's going to make mine unique. And it's not the idea that I don't like the dark flowers. I love dark flowers, like black lilies. They're called, I don't know, they have a name. They're not called black lilies. Maybe scarlet lilies? What are they called? Mm, I don't remember. But I love them. So it's not the dark flowers. So I think with the switched up situation, I think it'll be fine because it's going to put a lot, you know, the orange will be the bigger blob. And it'll still be fine with the house and these flowers. And if it doesn't, then I can change around like I may make these flowers into the dark flowers but it may bloom with the house too much I don't know we'll see I think it'll be fine but yeah so when I did them side by side I was like glad I didn't rip it out <laughs> that's all I can say because then I would have been mad <laughs> okay oh, I just put that lint on another bag all right so that is all the stitching 
that I did, which wasn't, like I said, it wasn't a ton, but I have a ton of plans. These are just open plans. They're not any particular date to start, complete, whatever. They're just things I really desperately wanted to kit up. And I kind of think it's funny because one, two, three, four, five of these could 100% be considered like Halloween. <laughs> yeah, you heard me right. I could stitch Halloween 365. It's my fave. I love the spooky. So I finally kit it up. So um, Mama Witch X Stitch, um, she did on uh, Stephen King's birthday, she did a freebie on her Facebook page, the happy birthday, Mr. King. And it's the two twins that are, but they're pumpkins um, from The Shining. And so I kitted that up. I think I just got the floss for everything. Yeah, I have no fabric in these. Um, I have to figure out the fabric situation. And I may do it on the black. I don't know. I don't know. We'll see. I feel like the brown doesn't show through very well through the vines. But that could just be my print. Yeah, y'all can't see through that. So, the next thing is the Witchy Stitcher Bloody Handprints. It's a small, though. So, <laughs> I'm going to do that. And I'll definitely do that on black fabric. I think I got some black backs. I don't want to do that on chalkboard. I want to chalk, chalkboard. I want to do it on the black black. Um, yeah, none of these I have fabric picked for. Um, and this one, Jack the Ripper, the little stitcher. And I may do this one on, um, I think it's deep red. But he's got blood. I may have to rethink that. Excuse me. It's past my bedtime. Not really. <laughs> it just feels like it's midnight because it's dark. And I think it's only 526. But it feels like midnight. Um, yeah. Damn it. I'll have to rethink that because I really love this red. Dang it. Okay, the next one is, um, I kid it up, is the uh, Wild Violet, which I told y'all the story. I haven't met her yet because we, we haven't had, I couldn't make the last, sorry, my eyes itching. Probably got the cat here, I'm throwing it in the air. Um, I couldn't make the last Music City Stitchers um, stitch thing. I really want to go to the next one. I want to do everything I can to go. I hope it's when Chad isn't, isn't working. That's the best way for me to be able to go. But... Her little Grim Reaper. Hi. They don't fear the Reaper. So I kitted him up. Um, super simple. <laughs> um, and then I got my uh, Rebel Stitcher Needle Minder already picked for this one. And it's the Wish You Were Here coffin. So, yeah, I've just got to figure out fabric on all these and I really like that dark blue but maybe he'll go on the blood red I'm gonna look like a blood moon maybe except for there's a moon in that so that doesn't work either oh well another wild violet stagecoach in the woods and basically this is just 310 I just have to figure out what I want to put it on maybe I'll put it on red <laughs> I mean, I am like seriously wanting to use that red. Can you tell? I'll have to like show y'all the red. It's in the other room though. Okay, so now we actually get to some, the actual season. It's another um, Mama Witch X Stitch. And this is another freebie and it's one a piece of, and I showed y'all this the other room. It's that turkey. <laughs> Oh my God, it's so funny. Um, and so I got the, the DMC for it. I don't have fabric yet. I don't know if I'll do it on black or not. Um, yeah, so this is the, the only seasonal. This is in a dot dot goose bag, yeah. And then I put in my Linux stitch bag that I got. So, and this is the only Christmas one. 
I just got the floss for it so far. Little House Needleworks Jingle All the Way. I definitely am not going to put it on that pale of a background. Um, but I got all the flosses. They're all classic color works. They're so pretty. So, yeah, I definitely want to start it. And then I put the Rebel Stitchers Christmas needle minder in there. So, I mean, those are all the plans. That's a lot. Um, all right, so I have Shop Haul, too. Let me show that real quick. Then maybe we'll do a scary story, and then we'll do the resolution box. All right, so um, the last of the Quaker Birthday Cake series, December by RETM. That is the December cake. I have no place to set these. And then we have uh, number 11 of A Time for All Seasons by Cottage Garden Samplings. This is a turkey day. And that's a good looking turkey. I like good looking turkey. I have to very carefully stack these. And then I've got Primrose Cottage Stitches, Welcome Winter. It's so cute. And then we have Senorita de Campania. I don't know. It's Corey Angela. It has to do with Heart of Christmas Angels or something, I'm sure. Because she has the whole heart series, which is what Corey is. Um, and then Corey Santa Claus. Sorry, there's terrible glare on these. He's so cute. I'm going to sneeze. Yep. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. So. I just showed y'all part of that. I'm sorry if I did. This is Lindy Stitches Polar Bear Abode. So cute. I feel like this was maybe originally in Punch Needle. Maybe not. And then when she did December Dance without being the kit like I have the kit and then now this is just the pattern so you can get just the pattern or you can get the kit I have both on my website not Etsy website www.pumpkincreekprimitives.com and then we have another Lindy Stitches and it's um and to all a good night and it looks like it has Emily's house in it or whoever's house that was and one of her other <laughs> It's not, but. <laughs> and then we have Glad Tidings by Lindy Stitches. Those are cute. And then I got Trick or Treat. That amazing cat. Barbara Anna Designs. I got another one that was Wood, Wood Witch or... And they only sent me one of them, so I didn't put it on the site yet. Um, I'll have to order, try to order some more. And then we have O oh, by Shakespeare's Peddler. Look at that house. It looks great. So, there you go. So, that is all that came in for the website. This actually came in two weeks ago. This is what I was supposed to be doing that I didn't do. I think I told you that last week when I didn't feel like doing anything. That, that was this. I didn't feel like taking pictures or putting them on the website. It happens. It happens. Okay. Now, do a little story time. I feel like my nose is being a little snotty. Okay. It's super short. Hopefully it don't have hard words. <laughs> oh, if you're new, um, I am reading a story a week out of this by Darcy Coates, Small Hawks. Um, I know that it is no longer spooky season, but it's spooky 365 for me. So I'm going to continue reading them. Um, I had said that I was going to do these every two weeks. 
I still haven't made my decision yet. Um, so if next week, if I'm not doing it next week, I'll just do a post on YouTube that says see you next week. Um, I thought I had made up my mind that I was, that I was, that I was definitely going every two weeks until the end of the year. But I'm like, I'm not going to remember what I did. I, I have a hard enough time remembering what I did just for one week. And so it kind of, I think it may be harder for me and longer and harder to edit. So we'll see. This one's called Knocker. Carla used an oar to push off from the shore. The canoe rocked as it swept past the rushes clustered around the lake's border and entered the clear water. You think that's supposed to be bushes? <laughs> no, I guess that's rush. Okay, it doesn't matter. Sorry. The icy cold wind snapped at her exposed skin, but the jacket she'd brought protected her from the worst of the chill. Night creatures wailed mournfully from the forest bordering the lake, but their calls became increasingly remote as Carla steered her canoe towards the lake center. The moon wasn't quite full, but it was close, and the lights created odd ripples across the water where her paddle disturbed its surface. Once she was far enough into the lake that she... Nope. Once she was far enough into the lake that the cabin's lights, lights were a faint glow... Carla pulled her oar back into the boat. The canoe continued to roll in the tiny wave she'd created, but it gradually stilled. The air was calm, and in the distance, the water was still enough to act as a mirror for the sky. Its surface was dotted with thousands of stars. It, has been, it had been years since Carla had visited the remote lake, and she was always astounded by how clear the night was without light pollution or smog clouding it. She folded her hands in her lap, closed her eyes, and began to hum. The tune brought back a rush of memories from her childhood. She and her friends had sung it every time they'd gone to the lake, and she found it easy to remember their faces, Claire, Peta, and Mary, beaming, laughing, and splashing water at each other. It's been so long since I last saw them, last spoke to them. Time slips by faster with each passing year. From what she'd heard, no one went on the lake anymore. She'd even passed some aged warning signs on the way to the cabin. Their water wasn't safe to swim in, the signs insisted. Not that a sign was enough to deter Carla. Her family had virtually lived on the lake when she was a child. Some government official who had probably never camped under the open night sky had no right to tell her where she could and couldn't tread. She closed her eyes as she continued the mournful tune. The boat had been drifting while she sat, and the forest noises were now inaudible under the gentle lapping and her hums. Something scratched on the boat's underside. It was so faint that Carla almost didn't hear it. She snapped her eyes open and looked across the lake. Everything was still. Probably a fish. She resumed the tune and leaned back. The air felt still felt cold, but she was slowly adjusting to it. She knew her fingers would be numb by the end of an hour but she didn't intend to stay on the lake for that long. The brushing noise repeated. Carla didn't move, but her eyes snapped forward to the boat's hull, to the section of wood that separated her from the creature below. The noise had been too loud and too drawn out to be a fish, unless it was a very large, very slow fish. Carla wet her lips. She glanced behind herself towards the shore where the cabin lights glittered in the dark. She was the only one in the lake that week. With the water off limits, holiday and families had moved on to more inviting camps. The sound came once again, only this time it was accompanied by a scraping. It sounded like long, dull claws dragging across the boat's hull. Carla's breathing was shallow. Sweat broke out across her already cold skin. She wanted to put her legs off the wooden base, but instead she reached for the oar. She raised it too quickly, one end bumped the boat's side, she froze, her heart throbbing against her ribs, knuckles white on the oar's wooden handle. There was perfect silence for a second, a quiet so deep and so vast that Carla's ears rang with it. Then a solid thud shook the canoe. Her knock had been answered. There was no one to hear her scream, even if she'd had enough moisture in her mouth to make a noise. Carla dunked the oar over the canoe's side and dragged it through the water. She managed two strokes towards land before the paddle was seized. Carla 
gasped and tried to tug it free. She was able to pull it partway out of the water before the pressure increased, dragging it from her hands and sweeping it deep into the lake where it would likely never be recovered. Without the oar, she was stranded in the lake center. Carla twisted in her seat, her eyes straining to see movement through the dark. There! Water to her left rippled as someone moved through it. The shape disappeared as it drew closer, and then a slow, horrific scraping sound ran along the underside of the boat. Starting at one side, drawing below Carla with agonizing slowness and ending on her other side, ripples disturbed the mirror-like water. She waited to squeeze her eyes closed and clamp her hands over her ears to block out the sound, but she knew doing that would be suicide. She hunkered low in the canoe, hands resting on the clutter of shapes in its base as shivers ran through her. The world was quiet and still. Carla's breath plumbed with every exhale and her heart continued to thunder, but everything else was perfectly calm. She could almost think she'd imagined the whole thing. Then the unseen visitor hit the boat hard enough that Carla would have been thrown over if, she had, if she'd been standing. She exhaled a grunt as she hit the wooden side. The boat twirled like a leaf in the water. Another bump came from the other side, sending her careening in the opposite direction. Carla tightened her hands on the wood below her to keep her seat. The visitor was trying to throw her out of the canoe and she clung on with every ounce of strength she possessed. The idea of being cast into the ink black lake, her legs kicking feverishly as she fought to reach land, a waiting morsel for the unseen visitor, visitor made her heart freeze. The boat spiraled wildly, twirling in place, then was snapped to a halt. Carla blinked back tears as she stretched the rolling water, oh, excuse me, as she searched the rolling water for the eyes she knew were about to appear. The creature rose out of the lake. It was perfectly silent except for the water dripping off its misshapen form. The eyes, hundreds of them, all human, scattered erratically over its pulsing off-grade hide, swiveled to look at her. She thought she recognized a pair, child size, the exact shade of blue that Clarice had possessed, bulging in the same way Clarice had in those last moments. They had thought they were being brave by leaving camp in the middle of the night. Their parents had been asleep and they were eager to reach the opposite shore and explore the woods before going home. Pita's oar had been pulled out of her hands as they neared the lake center. Confused, she leaned over the boat's edge to peer into the water. She'd been pulled in. Then came the scraping and the rocking. Mary tried to stand and toppled over the edge. Clarice and Carla had clung to each other in the boat's base as the Bulging-eyed creature rose out of the water, reached forward, plucked Carla's friend out of her arms. At first, she hadn't known why she had been spared that night. It was only during the following years that a sense of purpose had come over her. Carla's fingers tightened around the wood in her hands. She lifted the harpoon, a decade of practice and the throbbing adrenaline making the barbed spear seem to weigh nothing and turned to face the visitor. Hundreds of eyes from countless lost souls stared at her, lidless and unblinking, and Carla stepped forward to claim her revenge. I was going to say it was Jason, but then it had hundreds of eyes. So obviously it's not Jason Voorhees. I like these little stories. I try not to mess them up too bad. Speaking of stories, so I had, oh, books are heavy. I had showed y'all that I had read this. If you guys have, um, anybody have Kindle Unlimited, this is, you can read for free. I didn't know that when I bought these. And there are a few of Darcy Coates books that are on there for free. Um, and I was also going to make mention <laughs> that, um, I probably have a hundred bookmarks around my house, all kinds. I even have some with Mr. Salvatore on it, that, but I'm bad. I will, whatever I have, it becomes a bookmark. So, and my husband's calling me. Hold, please. He's trying to spray some cabinets and his sprayer just went the poop on him. So he's got to run to town. Anyways, I will grab whatever I have and it becomes a bookmark. I have a book somewhere that still has camel cash in it. <laughs> From back in the day when camel, well, I used to smoke, camel had camel cash in it. 
Um, but this time I have a real bookmark because I believe it was in my Leanne's box, the Forbidden Fiber Code box. So this is the one I started. It is really good. I'm not very far because I did more stitching than reading. I just kind of, I read it one night for a little bit. Um, I enjoyed it. But I told y'all when I bought my small horrors book that I also bought some other spooky books. So I got The Spooky South and... It's got some really short, good little stories in it, so it'll happen one day. Then I got Nashville Haunted Handbook, and I thought it was fun. It kind of just, um, it's got some pictures, not, oh, that's lovely. <laughs> Music Row, they took like the shittiest picture of Music Row. That's like the on, that's like where you, um, there's a choice to go on the interstate or go up this little side street to go to Music Row. And that is literally what they took a picture of. And that is the, that's so crappy. <laughs> anyway. Um, yeah. So there's like, a, you know, some nice little dossiers on the little thing. So I thought that was fun. And then the Ghost Bridge and Other Creepy Tales of the Haunted South. And I like this one because they had really nice pictures. And when I'm reading ghost things, I would like pictures of the place. Right? So, um, yeah. And so they're by um, the Orpheum Theater, Tennessee. So they're by state. Uh, Shiloh National, National Park. And then we have... Castilian Springs, and then we have the Bell Witch Cave, and then we have the Carton Plantation, which they just show one little outbuilding, which is super odd that they don't actually show the whole plantation, but whatever. It's in Franklin. So yeah, so I thought those are nice little books to add to my collection, and I need to remember to take Hunted to my mom so she can read, and then I just bought Beloved by Toni Morrison. I bought two copies for me and my mom to read. We're gonna read them together. So I'm excited about that. All right, so I showed you what I was reading. This is kind of like, I'm kind of doing like what, what um, Three Trail Stitchers do. Um, reading, watching, listening to. I'm still listening to The Fall Line. Um, and then I started a great podcast because it was advertised on The Fall Line and I started listening to, it's called Bad Women, Ripper Retold, and that's what it looks like, and it is about the victims of Jack the Ripper, about the women, because we don't normally hear about the women, they're just evidence to what he did, and it's always about him, and um, so these are about the actual victims, and a lot of things that, like, most people, we all know that they were prostitutes, but I think most of us didn't know they weren't from, originally from that area of town, they um, were from respectable families originally, or at least uh, most of them, they had been married at one time, had children, except for one. So um, they were basically just people at some point, whether it's from um, a husband dying and the women didn't inherit anything and just down on their luck. And so it's really, really sad um, because I think history has just made them out to be um, the way society still looks at sex workers, that they're just disposable. And so I think it's going to be a really great podcast. Um, I'm only partly into episode one and I, I'm hooked, hooked. Um, watching, so the new Dexter came out. I think it's called Dexter New Blood. And it had been so long because I watched Dexter when it was like actually on on. So I watched it live. <laughs> and so I went back and I started watching Dexter again. So... Um, yeah, I'm only on like season two. I've got a ways to go. Um, but that's basically, um, what I have been watching. Um, yeah, I've just been binging it while I'm doing, doing stuff in the shop and while I'm stitching. So, cause I don't really have to pay full attention cause I'd watched it before. As long as I can hear the combo, it kind of reminds me like what was going on. So, all right guys. So now I'm going to do. Make sure I did everything else I did. So now I'm going to do the resolution stitching box. And after this, um, there will be two videos. One of the kitty cats, one of the puppies. So there's that. All right. So this is the resolution stitching. 
And um, I am missing one item. I did not reach out to them. It's the stitch counter. I have a bunch. I saw like I don't, it's fine. I don't need it. It's not worth them putting postage and mailing it. Um, if it if it was something, and I know they would, don't get me wrong. I just, you know, it's fine. Um, and so we got some for, uh, more floss from Forbidden Fiber Co. The River of Life. Look how gorgeous that is. I immediately, when I opened this up, I immediately messaged her. Apparently it's time for me to stand. <laughs> I immediately messaged Leah and it was like, girl, river of life. It's gorgeous. So, I got Ski over here snooping around again. We also got Project Trackers three years, which is great because I love using these. So, um... Oh, these may be some different ones in here. Hey, Bobby, how about you open? Why am I do not have dexterity in my hand? There we go. Okay. I feel so bad that my husband... Are you coming up here? Still waiting on my stuff. You haven't bugged me in a while. I guess it's about time. You let everybody see your eye boogies. Are you letting everybody see your mouth and your TVs and your chin? <laughs> Ski. Let's not go that direction, though. Here, lay down. Don't lay in the box, Bubby. Anyways, so we got three-year trackers in here. Oh, and then just one. Okay, so it's just one yearly tracker. So I guess I took that out for nothing. Hey, can you, can you... Can you settle? <laughs> See that shiny coat? Skeeter Peter. Okay. Got some stickers. Super cute. And then we got a needle minder. What are you looking at Arlo for? That says new year, new start. Super cute. And then we got a sparkle stick. And a modern folk embroidery, the river. Beautiful as that. <laughs> My chair is making all kinds of noises. I don't know what you're eating on, but you're... Oh, you got the... It's got the toys, trying to eat the feathers off the toys. So then we got a little deck of cards. Challenge sticking, stitching deck. Quit. He's literally eating the feathers off of it. So. Stitch, a pe stitch on a piece with food. So I love these. I would love to at some point in the new year, I'm assuming there maybe there's 52, oh, <laughs> instructions. Use these 52 cards to help inspire your stitching throughout the year. Choose a card when you need help or choose your next project or draw one card a week for a fun, long challenge. Um, yeah, <laughs> I was gonna say one a week, but I think that's too much for, I was gonna say it'd be fun to do something with this on my challenge, challenge on my channel to like, even if it's just once a month, grab one and um, see who all wants to stitch and tag me if they're, okay, okay, okay. Hey, go this way. They normally, like I said, they don't care about the toys and this one's like attacking everything for the toy. Okay, and the other thing you got in there was a stitching journal. Now, if you want to see this page by page by page, you really need to check out Athena's um, YouTube because she goes through it. Because I'll be honest, I did what most people do and you flip through and you're just like, oh yeah, okay. It's a planner. But it's got the calendar full there. It's got stitching challenges here, which is amazing. 
but it's got starting stats, like personal goals, and then you have A to Z stitching challenge. It's so like pin things against each other to where it's like put in at least 500 stitches or finish a project. They begin with the letter A in the alphabet in 2022. So yeah, pamper yourself stitching goals. Um, these are all just lists of, you know, reward yourself with stuff. Uh, word of the year stitching challenge. Um, seriously? Ski honey, lay down, lay down. Or at least show your pretty face and not your butt. You lay down. Okay. Bobby. Okay. Can you just sit here? So anyways. And they got... <laughs> they got bingo challenge. And it's not Whipco. It's a bingo. Um, so they just... There's so much jammed into this book. So there may be, you can do works in progress on here, new purchases if you want to. Um, yeah, it's battle for March, battle of the whips. So you have this little guy here instead of doing, because I know we're not wanting to use madness, so the March Madness, um, March Mayhem. So they have battle of the whips. So yeah. So I think and that was all that was in that box. And I think that I love that planner. It's got tons of stuff. I'm glad I watched Athena's. Um, cause I'll be honest. I just looked at it. I was like, Oh, it's a planner, but I may actually try to use this. No, you don't need to go anywhere. Can you just say hi? Can you just be good? Say hi. Oh, oh I love the rubs. <laughs> so I think that's it guys. Um, it's been an hour. Oh, you got, you need to clean your face. All right. I hope everybody has a wonderful stitchy week. Um, I did want to say I'm working on, I can't remember what days I took off from work. Um, around Christmas time because I'm taking probably like a whole week closing both the website and Etsy um, for like a whole week and then I'm gonna work on the glow forge okay this one you're digging your back claws into my hand thanks so yeah I'm gonna use it to maybe do some FFOs and try to figure out the, the glow forge <laughs> Ski with your little soul patch. And show everybody your soul patch. I mean, they already saw it earlier. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Like big stretchy arms. This is exactly what everybody wanted to see. <laughs> well, you know, you're getting a lot of him because he was missing for a couple weeks. I don't know what Arlo's doing. And Isis is probably downstairs. Oh, you got it. Oh, <laughs> you're getting good, buddy. All right, guys. Have a wonderful stitch week. I'll see you next week. Bye. Are y'all being nice and cleaning each other? Being good brothers? Oh, we got biting. How does the sweetness always end up into a fight? Creating something new and helping people. <laughs> the baby is so much bigger than Arlo. Sorry, ignore my background. Mm-hmm. Alright, so who's gonna be Casper? <laughs> sit down. Everybody sit down. Sit down. Sit. <laughs> Sassy pants. Sit down, Lucian. Sit, Lush. Sit down. Can y'all sit at the same time? <laughs> sit. Sit. Lucian, sit. Lucian, sit. <laughs> sit down. <laughs> sit. Sit, Lucian. <laughs> sit. <laughs> sit. Set. It's about damn time. Oh, sorry, y'all are seeing everything else. What you got, Lucian? You got a turkey? What you got? Jasper, you got the cooking with joy? <laughs> There's treats in there, but we don't have to see the treats. Seriously, boys, we're gonna fight over the turkey. <laughs> yep, we're gonna fight over the turkey. Lucian got a turkey. Y'all, it's, it's a madhouse in here.
Not a cat to be found. <laughs> All right. Hey, cutie patootie. You just can't get your mouth on it. That's why you don't like that one as much. Oh, there you go. Oh, there's a recipe. <laughs> They'll have that tore up soon. They'll start wrestling over it. All right. Hey, Lucy, you say bye? Nope. All right, let's get the treats. See all the dirt on mama's floor? Yeah, because it was muddy. Somebody's were playing into muds. <laughs>